From the City of Angels off the Pacific Ocean, good morning, good evening, wherever you may be across the nation, around the world. I'm George Norrie, and welcome to Coast to Coast AM. First of all, thank you so much for the courtesy that you extended to our guest host Friday night, Richard Serrett. You know, it's not easy filling in. Believe me, I know that. And he did a great job, and I appreciate your kindness there. Next hour, special report on the Mexican swine flu. As a matter of fact, the World Health Organization has raised its alert level over the swine flu from three to four. Now, that is two steps short of declaring a full pandemic. A WHO assistant said that it has signaled a significant step towards pandemic influenza, but added, we're not there yet. Mexico said earlier it believed 149 people have now died from the swine flu outbreak. Only 20 cases confirmed. 44 cases in the United States, no reported deaths there. And a team of scientists apparently predicted more than a year ago that Mexico and other tropical locales were emerging hotspots for diseases that jump from animals to humans, getting it right on the newly reported swine flu. Apparently this week, the scientists are analyzing the patterns of the new swine flu viruses spread and trying to predict the next moves. The researchers should have preliminary findings by the weekend. Team leader Peter Dozak of the Wildlife Trust has said that to live science. Dr. Dean Adele earned his M.D. from Cornell University Medical School in 1967. He has his own nationally syndicated program called Dr. Dean Adele Radio, and here he is right now. Dean, this is this getting blown out of proportion Oh, it's hard to say. I can't predict the future. At this particular point, sure. You know, media's gone crazy. We've had 44 cases. They've all been mild. I think there's one hospitalization. Mexico City's pretty terrible, but we're kind of used to that also in other countries where people have lots of other infections and different immune systems. Sometimes the same virus will just wreak havoc, and here we kind of we kind of do okay. So it's kinda, it's hard it's hard to say, but flu. Listen, flu is an important disease. In an average year, 35,000 people die from it in the United States, up to half a million people in the world. So we tend to take it for granted because it's just the flu. But it's a serious illness and always, and always has, has been a little mutation, and we could have problems. And, and like you say, you know, we've had 35, 36,000 people die in the United States from the normal flu every year. Dean, if we had 5,000 people die from this strain, people would be going crazy. Uh, well, absolutely. I remember a couple of years ago where we just were tracking every death, and the news reports would come up today, 15 people died. Well, it's, it's, it's normal. It just sounds awful. And it, it, it's a bit of a distortion. You, nevertheless, you know, with, we've been set up with bird flu and with S- SARS. SARS, yeah. And here comes the, the, the swine flu. And, you know, it, we're worried if another mutation happens, it could make it worse. But you've got to realize the mutation can happen to make it more benign also. Um, so it's, it's fairly unpredictable. And we at least, you know, we've been thinking about this because of bird flu. So we're not as unprepared as we could have been. It's not that we're as prepared as some other countries, um, but we, you know, we have among the best scientists in the world on this, and we're keeping track of it. It is, it's frustrating. There's only two labs in North America that can test and tell you if you have swine flu. That's a bit frustrating, one in Atlanta, one in Winnipeg, uh, Canada. So there's a big time delay. And the other issue is if you got your flu vaccine this year, are you protected? And to be honest with you, George, I can't get to the bottom of this. I've seen three reports that say you might be protected because in this year's flu vaccine, there was an H1, uh, uh, H1N1, and this is that type, but there are subtypes to it. And some say, no, the current flu vaccine will not protect you. And if we had to make a vaccine, it's going to take four or five months to get it, uh, to get it distributed. So what can I say? All right, thank you. Dr. Dean Adele, his website, healthcentral.com. And I may very well be your guinea pig. As you know, I do not take the vaccine for flu. You do what you're going to do. But if they ever come up with one for the swine flu here, I'm not going to take it. A strong earthquake struck central Mexico just while they were all rattled over the swine flu. 5.6 magnitude swaying tall buildings in the capital, sending office workers out into the streets. Talk about office workers who panicked today in New York. Oh, my. 
As a matter of fact, the White House Military Office Director, Louis Caldera, is apologizing for any panic caused by a flight mission and photo opportunity that looked like Air Force One and fighter jets were heading right toward the New York City skyline this morning. Caldera said he approved the mission last week. Federal authorities took the proper steps, he says, to notify state and local authorities in New York and New Jersey. But for people who work in the New York Financial District, the event brought back nightmares of the 9-11 attacks. What they saw was the second version of Air Force One and military fighter jets flying very low right over the skyline. People panicked all over the place. Not a very good idea. Pakistan's president says his intelligence agencies believe Osama bin Laden may be dead. But he added there's no proof. Other Pakistani officials and a U.S. counterterrorism official said they thought the al-Qaeda chief is alive. U.S. officials said that bin Laden is most likely hiding in the mountains along Pakistan's border with Afghanistan, in particular the lawless tribal regions. Reports of bin Laden's death or near captures have been all over the place for years, and he's been on the run since 9-11, only seemingly debunked by periodic audio and video recordings. He seems to pop up all the time. A man is being treated at a University of Iowa hospital after his son tried to cut out a pacemaker from his chest. The 32-year-old son was arrested for the attempted murder of his 63-year-old father. He hit him in the head with a flashlight, then a piece of firewood, Then he proceeded to cut a pacemaker out of his father's chest using a pocket knife. His father is resting in a hospital. Olin Corporation, which owns Winchester, says they posted a great increase in profit in the first quarter. Why? Because of demand for ammunition from commercial, law enforcement, and military buyers. And as you know, as we've reported, it's very difficult to find ammunition these days. But Winchester, through Olin, doing very, very good. More than a 1,000 people defrauded out of about $70 million by a group of advertising folks who pushed the dream of home ownership in what turned out to be a nightmare Ponzi scheme, according to federal and Maryland officials. Five officers for the company based called Metro Dream Homes are accused of tricking homeowners into pouring money into the business with the promise that the revenue would be used to pay off their mortgages. The scheme ran from 2005 until October of 2007. General Motors could be majority owned by the federal government under a massive restructuring plan that will also see 21,000 U.S. factory jobs cut by next year and phase out the Pontiac brand. The plan, which includes an offer to swap roughly $21 billion in bond debt for GM stock, would leave current shareholders holding just 1% of the century-old company, which is fighting for its life in the worst auto sales climate in 27 years. Daimler has reached an agreement with Chrysler and its owner to simply sell out its remaining 19.9% stake in the company, and they are going to forgive a $1.5 billion loan that they made as well. Ms. Shedlock with us, our investment advisor, sort of, is on the line with us. Well, it looks like things are changing in the automobile industry, Mish. Yes, they are. Um, the clock is ticking for GM. They have till uh, June 1st to reach an agreement outside of bankruptcy court, and it really doesn't look likely. The administration is giving GM um, bondholders, offering GM bondholders right now, um, 10% equity in GM. The total equity in GM is worth $1.25 billion. The bondholders have $27 billion in um, uh, debt that's owed to them. That's less than a half of a percent. So it looks like to me that the GM bondholders, at least on this deal, would you take a half a penny on the dollar? I I think I would take my chances in bankruptcy court to get nothing. So that's what it looks like it's going to happen. In the meantime, there's some other interesting deals that are coming out here. We want to know who's on the other side of credit default swaps. In other words, who who stands to benefit if GM goes bankrupt? Uh, uh, I don't know the answer to that, but... Uh, I'm kind of sus- suspecting perhaps J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Citigroup by any chance. So uh, 